Jesus is risen, he's risen indeed. It is Easter Sunday and I thought I'd share a short video reflection on the gospel reading that's been suggested for churches to read today. I'm actually at the cemetery garden in Oakley across the road from St. David's where I'm looking after the congregation at the moment. And um, before we approach the scripture, I thought it'd be good to just take a moment to notice how we are as we're approaching the scripture. If you find it helpful for your concentration, you might wanna close your eyes. But I wanna encourage you to take a moment to just notice what's on your mind. Pay attention to the ideas and thoughts that might be swirling around there or might be settling. And also take some time to notice what's on your heart. The feelings and emotions that might be sitting there. And take some time to notice what you're experiencing in the whole of your body. Be attentive to what your body is saying to you. And also be aware of the other creatures that are about. It might be plants or birds, other animals, it might be other people. And be aware of the relationships and connections you have with them. As we prepare to read the gospel, all of this experience and all of this relationship maybe have, it may have something to say to us and it might inform what we hear. The gospel reading is from the gospel of Mark chapter 16, verse one to eight. So feel free to pause the video and have a read of that and then start the video up again. Where I used to live in Carlton, there is a very large cemetery and it's a very popular cemetery. If I was a dad, you know exactly what joke I would make about that. But there are literally signs up outside the cemetery telling people when plots are becoming available and saying that you should get in and buy one while they're available. One of the things that's so nice about it is that it's been designed not just to be a cemetery, but also a garden and a public park. When it was designed, the planners were hoping that people would come there not just to remember the dead, but also to enjoy the beauty of the living garden. The story of the Bible starts off in a garden with the Jewish creation stories. And today we find ourselves back in a garden, a cemetery garden, like this one in Oakley or like the one in Carlton or the one in Springvale. Mary, Mary and Salome have gone there to grieve their dead friend, Jesus. But a cemetery garden is a place where life and death are both abundant and intermingled. And this is where the rumor of the resurrected Christ is first announced, in the cemetery garden. In John's version of the story, Mary Magdalene actually meets Jesus in the garden. And when Mary finds him, she first thinks that he is the gardener, the person who buries seeds in the soil so that new plants can grow up. Maybe he had dirt under his nails. Maybe she saw a likeness of the divine gardener who created everything. Maybe he was just giving off a sense of overflowing life energy. But in this version, Mary doesn't meet the resurrected Christ. The body is missing and the women are told of the news by a messenger. There's no uh, eyewitness evidence for them. A messenger says that Jesus has gone back to Galilee, the place where the journey of this gospel began, and he's waiting for his followers to join him there. We might expect that with this news, they'll drop everything and go to tell the other disciples so that they can set off. But it says that they tell no one because they're afraid. It's a bit of a dissatisfying ending, isn't it? No wonder some of the early editors of this gospel have added more stories that include visions of the resurrected Christ. But this ending suggests that maybe Jesus is still there wandering around Galilee, hoping that some disciples will come to join him. It's up to us as the people hearing the story to go out into the world and find where the resurrected Christ might be so that we can follow him. As we prepare to head out into the community this Easter season, 
let's be alert to signs of new life amidst the death so that we can recognize where the risen Christ is present and we can continue to walk with him. So that the word of life is not lost, let's take a few moments of silence to allow God to confront us.